Hello everyone, welcome back to New Horizons, where it's time to start playing with some high voltage. So it's actually been a substantial amount of time, about 8 hours has passed between episodes, and I had a lot of the episode recorded already, but I realised it wasn't that interesting. At least not in its full form, so let's do a bit of a supercut here to get us up to speed on where we're at. So this all started when I realised that a lot of the LV machines couldn't run in parallel, and this is actually an issue because we are going to have a use for the LV machines for the foreseeable future. It's important that we're able to keep them running. So I decided to craft up some more high pressure solar boilers just for good measure and slightly rework the way they were set up. I decided it was time to remove the Railcraft buffer tank that we used to use and instead replaced it with a Gregtech super tank which actually holds double its capacity. And after doing some very very minor cleanup I think it's looking a lot better than what it was. A treasure. I have no idea where that came from. Yeah, so we've still kept the water tanks here just to make sure we could cool the solar boilers, that's very important. But we've also supplemented them with a reservoir, so we can add a few more boilers if we if that becomes necessary. I still kept the entrance on this side of the base. Again, nothing fancy, it's not supposed to be a main entrance to the base. But things are looking much better than what they were before. We have access to the solar boilers if we need to decalcify. And also the super tank here, which is actually full. Oh yeah, and check out these doors we added. They automatically close behind us as well. Yeah, simple and effective. I really like the way this turned out. Just before the steam setup rework though, I did actually move the miner in the nether. It was placed on an electrotine vein, which we are going to need today. However, I went back to check on it several hours later. I realised it hadn't actually mined too much, and I think it's because it spawned next to a lava pool. So a lot of the ore vein didn't actually spawn at all. I did move it when I realised that's what happened, so let's go check on it now and see how far it is through the second vein of electrotine. I think it should be finished, that was a couple of hours ago, if we can find where it is in the nether here. There is so many tunnels I've dug through here, I, I get lost in here all the time. Oh great, I didn't move the waypoint. <laughs> nice, this was the old location, which as you can see goes straight through lava. Oh no, there is a second one here. I, I guess we're just at the wrong waypoint, we can remove this one. Alright, we found the miner here, this looks more like it. And we are going to want to move this miner immediately, because at least for what we have planned today, we're going to be using a lot of resources, some of which we still don't have. Yeah, let's put this chest along with the other outputs of the miner. These things never seem to get empty, no matter how much material processing I do. <laughs> we have tons and tons of resources, just not the stuff we actually need here. It's crazy. Oh, and that isn't all of it either. Of course, we have all of these ore chests. Look at this. Just insane insane amounts of stuff right here. But wait, there is more. I also batch crafted some HV circuits. Not enough by the way, I did miscount so we're gonna have to make up some more today. <laughs> Fortunately, just before hitting record, I did actually pull together these resources, which should be enough for 16 M HV circuits. We'll get onto this later on though. With the original batch of circuits though, I actually invested four into two more remote sensor upgrades for the inventory panel, and also invested in the compressed chest. Check this thing out, the compressed chest is a massive chest right here, massive inventory, and the best part about this thing is it does retain its inventory when you break it, and that makes it exceptionally good for the miners. Unfortunately we were only able to get three, two of them we have here connected to our inventory panel, the remote sensor or the remote awareness upgrades are on these two chests, along with the one on the floor here, the original diamond chest. So that means we have access to all three of the contents of those chests, and this inventory panel is much more usable in this state now. So what about the third compressed chest? Well, that is actually on our second miner. So some of the other HV circuits went to craft the HV miner. The HV miner has a range of 49 by 49 and a fortune bonus of 3, compared with 33 by 33 and a fortune bonus of 2 of the MV miner. And that is currently placed in the Twilight Forest mining nickel for us. And unfortunately, I spent so much time in the Twilight Forest prospecting that I actually broke the prospector. We just ran out of durability, so that's something we'll have to look at replacing here soon. Because of the range of the HV Miner, it means that we can actually get two ore veins at once. So I was looking for a situation where we had Nickel and Appetite together. Unfortunately, we didn't find that, so we'll have to find Appetite another way today. Similar to the other miners, though, this thing can actually run on less power than its current tier. So we can actually use an MV gas turbine to power this thing, and of course run in benzene. However, because benzene runs for 360,000 EU, whereas diesel runs for 480,000, it means that we have to give it a bigger buffer of benzene. So I crafted up some aluminium fluid cells. These are just a way to store more fluid at once, and we can give this to a pump next to the gas turbine on site. 
And this is basically how we'll be powering the miners from now on. So there is some other things to talk about which have changed between episodes. But let's go over what the plan is for today. We have two major goals. The first is the clean room, and the second is the vacuum freezer. The clean room is essential for us to craft the processor assembly, which is the next tier of HV circuit. And the freezer is actually going to take the first EV tier of circuit, which we do need the clean room in order to craft, along with a bunch of other garbage here, which I have been preparing for. <laughs> I really hope I didn't miss anything out of this. But yeah, let's get back to these circuits right here. Circuit boards, tin bolts, resistors, diodes, logic circuits and copper wire should be enough for 32 LV circuits. And while that is crafting, I really want to go and place this miner again. The trouble is, as I mentioned, we broke the prospector, and I'm really not sure if it's a good idea to invest in another right now. Since once we get the clean room, we're going to have access to cheaper circuits at MV tier. And the prospector itself isn't exactly that cheap. I think it's three circuits to craft this thing. It's a tough decision to make, honestly. You know what? I think we'll actually hold on to it until we establish what we actually need first as a priority. But yeah, I have already spent hours and hours and hours just crafting, moving stuff from machines, moving back to storage, <laughs> moving stuff into machines. It's actually a lot of fun. It's just not something really I can show on video. But one thing I do want to mention is that I think I've actually improved since season one. So I think when you're setting up machines, you want to make it as easy as possible to transport from your primary storage location into all of the machines to batch craft. And this layout definitely trumps the Season 1 base. It's just generally a lot easier to access all the machines because they're all in a big circle, basically. So let's look at the HV chapter. There is four machines I would like to pick up before we access the cheaper circuits, three of which are essential. The HV Assembly Machine, the HV Advanced Precision Laser Engraver, and I believe also the HV Cutting Machine is also essential. Oh yeah, and the Advanced Circuit Assembler, which is an MV machine which takes HV circuits. This is one of the exceptions to the rule. So I guess there's four mandatory machines we have to craft here. And the fifth one I would like to get is the Universal Macerator. All right, 32 LVs. Hopefully I got everything correct and counted out. This should start the recipe. Yes, perfect. So since we're gonna be making use of HV machinery, we're gonna need HV power, right? And actually I just remembered we do have this HV chemical reactor here, which is being powered by a transformer. However, I think we want to make the switch over to HV gas turbines. And I believe I did account for this, is this two more HV circuits. I think this is going to be the last time we set up the machines in this sort of configuration. Once, especially once we hit EV, there's going to be a lot higher usage of multi-blocks. Uh, let's put the chemical reactor here. And for that, we have some other plans. They're probably not even going to go in this room. That's about the point in the game where we're going to expand quite a bit, actually. So I've also been making up some HV batteries. We're going to make use of the same battery system we had at MV which I think is a quest. Yes, it is. And of course, we're going to make these into lithium batteries. I didn't check the tier of this recipe. I'm really hoping we can do this LV. We can. We are also going to go with a nine slot HV battery buffer, which is extremely overkill for this point. For a start, we don't have that many HV batteries. We only have four. And secondly, I don't think we'll have nine HV machines today. Maybe, but we'll see. We're short some gold wire, and I just recently found out that we can actually turn these into 16x gold wire in the wire mill using circuit 16, because it takes almost the same amount of time, 8 seconds. You get the full 16x gold wire, but then you can just easily craft down to 1x if that's what you want. In this case, we want 8x wire. Yeah, that is a massive time save right there. Alright, so 9 slot HV battery buffer. And we'll need a cable for HV, right? There is, once again, a lot of cable options. We're going to go with something called blue alloy which is where we need our Electrotine. And there's a quest here in the HV chapter only unlocked after we get the processor assembly for some reason. And it wants us to hold 32 of each ore, so we want to make sure we, we keep at least 32 Electrotine. And the rest we can process, we can also get Electrum from this directly. Well, indirectly, but if we process it the correct way. And just in time, this should be the fourth HV battery. There it is. 16 MV circuits have now finished crafting. It looks like I overestimated the amount of materials we need. <laughs> I am terrible at counting here. But we should have enough material for 16 HVs. Right? Yes. We can also start claiming some quest rewards. And there's a choice reward here. Four large PTFE fluid pipes or two HV circuits. Uh, that's a really difficult choice because these are super useful for large chemical reactors. But I think we're going to keep these two in our back pocket just in case I'm miscounted once again. We do have six HV bags though, which I think we're just going to open. Uh, although we did get rapeseed actually, which is good for seed oil. Other than that, not great. Do you guys see him over there? The Chancer? 
One thing I did forget to mention is that we got revenge on these Endermen. <laughs> and not just because this guy is now toast. Oh no, 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 we done one better than that actually. Check this out, we finally managed to get ourselves an Enderman in the Smellery with regeneration. I don't think we'll be able to see him in there, but he is actually in there and he is named, which means he is going to infinitely produce us liquid Ender, which is being poured out into the gem cast and then into the drawer. And we have just more Ender Pearls than we know what to do with at this point in the game. In fact, I've already filled a full drawer here. So there's like nearly 100 stacks of Ender Pearls and they stack to 64 I believe in this. And the faucet here on the Smellery is just being pulsed by a timer. This thing you do not want to know the recipe for. I'm, I'm just going to leave it at that. <laughs> that is just so, such an unnecessary recipe right there. Alright, now I think it's time to get into HV proper high voltage. And it appears we're out of stainless steel rods, and we're down to 17 stainless steel in the chest, or the barrel. But fortunately, threefold thought ahead. <laughs> we were smart last episode. Check this out. So, one of the other things I'm super happy about is this EBF has been running... I mean, it just stopped like an hour ago. It's been running basically the full time we were doing Thomcraft. And look at this. Oh yeah. <laughs> now that is a substantial amount of stainless steel and aluminium. And black steel and pulsating iron. And one energetic alloy. Yeah, I've basically just been putting everything I can into this. We have plenty of oxygen and benzene from our benzene automation. So we gave them basically full super tanks here on each. All we have to do is check for maintenance every so often. But the fact that we chose benzene is now really paying off because it's effectively free for us to produce, right? All it costs us is time. And it also means that we can process all of this electro -teen. Look at all this stuff. This is probably gonna take like a full day to process in the ore washer. 25 seconds per crushed ore. Fortunately, we don't need that much to get started. But uh, yeah, the fact that we can just fill this up with benzene and leave it is amazing. Alright, so we got ourselves 8x blue alloy cable, which we're going to hook up to all of the HV machines. We did manage to craft ourselves the universal macerator, and actually I just remembered, blue alloy is one of the ones that does double amperage. As you can see here, it handles 16 amps, even though it's only 8x cable. So whenever we add more machinery, I'm going to downsize the cable to 4x, which is capable of 8 amps, and that should be able to handle all the battery buffer kit output. For now though, we can switch the processing of Electrotein. I've mentioned this before, but this 10% chance at Electrum only applies at HV tier or above. MV and below does not get any of this extra chance output, and that applies to every single macerator recipe. So we can use this to, to process things like the purified Electrotein, and eventually I think we'll have a second macerator and probably put it over there next to ore processing. But since we have the power over here, we'll, we'll use it here for now. We'll again power it with benzene, which is full again. And also the byproducts here, which we get from ashes centrifuging. We're now up to 15 stacks of iron dust, which we would not have had if we just trashed the ashes. Similarly, 38 stacks of calcium, only around a stack of carbon, 340 phosphorus dust, 35 stacks of potassium. Potassium's kind of useless, but I mean, getting all of this stuff for basically for free, it's 100% worth it to set this up. And yeah, eventually we'll probably have more gas turbines on this line, but plugging this in shouldn't have anything explode. Oh yeah, loud machines. Let's get some muffler upgrades. So yeah, we're processing Electrotein right now, but yeah, we can process basically anything that has a maceration chance output. Very, very worthwhile machine to pick up there. Something else that I didn't mention earlier, we do have some extra circuits for it though. This was the original batch I crafted before the episode started. And the fresh batch has also finished crafting the 16 advanced HV circuits. So the whole confusion with miscounting means that we actually have some extra, which we are going to use for the advanced autoclave, HV autoclave. Wow, I'm surprised that shift click actually worked. Another quest. And the autoclave is going to sit right here. This is going to help us with the first major goal for today, the clean room. Now that we have the infrastructure in place, we should have all we need to start crafting this thing. And it's going to be quite a few steps here, so let's start breaking things down. So the clean room is a multi-block structure which we put machines inside between 3x4x3 and 15x15x15. The larger we go, the more space we'll have for machines to fit inside. But of course that comes with a cost in materials because making it larger also means we need more filter machine casings. And these things ain't cheap for us. The quest book wants you to make the minimum 3x3 interior. I don't think we're going to go for minimum though. 
Let's try go for 5x5 five five at least. Yeah, and we can expand it later if we need to. In fact, we will need to, but yeah, we can expand it later on. So first of all, we're going to take some of this carbon dust. We should have some more here at Central Storage. Yeah, we've got an extra 28 stacks. It's not really a hard thing to come by. And we're going to put this inside the brand new autoclave with polyethylene. Not there, in the fluid slot. This is going to give us raw carbon fibre. So all of these carbon fibres are going to be used in these filters. There's two recipes, one with steel wire and one with raw carbon mesh. And the raw carbon mesh is the one we'll use. It's slightly cheaper, I'm really hoping we have enough zinc foil. Taking a look at our sl this might be the first thing we use our miner for actually. We have just under three stacks of ingots, and I think we have a couple stacks of dust here as well. Yeah, just under four stacks, that's going to be plenty. I hope. Maybe not. We'll see. <laughs> that was an extremely quick change of tone right there. Actually no, one thing I'm very confident in is that we're completely out of calcite. So calcite we need for plascrete blocks which is made from black steel. Black steel we have smelted through the EBF. This is only enough for a 3x3 and since we're now going for 5x5, five five, I'll have to smelt some more of that. Polyethylene pulp. Again, I think we'll have to make some more polyethylene here. And wet concrete, which is where the calcite is needed. So we don't need a ton of it, but we are going to move our miner into the twilight forest. And this thing will be placed on the nearest lapis vein. The lapis vein, of course, contains the calcite ore. Awesome, this thing is running smoothly. It shouldn't take too long, but, uh, I mean, even if it does, we have a lot of other things to do. While I was in the Twilight Forest, I went to check our brand new HV miner, which we had placed on Nickel before. Which appeared to have finished its mining job. So we took the miner and the Nickel back to base to start processing, and I started to work on some of the other things we would need for this clean room. With various processes started around the base, the blast furnace refilled with black steel, and the miner replaced in the nether for copper, I went out to collect some more oil, which we need for polyethylene, and slowly, slowly we've been starting to put together the materials for the clean room. Unfortunately, this is not a cutback to us having everything. You see, we have a bit of a bigger problem on our hands. <laughs> and that is this thing right here, insufficient power on all of the MV machinery. The thing is, we're still using the combustion generators to power this whole line, and that is a bit of an issue because we need light oil to create polyethylene. The way that we have this set up, the light fuel is produced in this chemical reactor and it's sent to the mixer, which we actually just disable manually so that we don't create diesel. And then the light fuel is taken over here to make polyethylene. And of course we need to be making polyethylene for the clean room. So we need to think of a smart solution. And I think there actually might be one. So I keep mentioning about circuits, right? Circuits are a, quite a big problem for us at this point. However, what if we were to craft the advanced disassembler? Now it is quite expensive and it takes 6 circuits, 6 MV circuits because the robot arms are 1 each, plus 2 more for the machine itself. We are going to do it though. Quest? No quest, really? No way is this not a quest. Oh, maybe it's for the LV one. Okay, no quest for the MV one, we have a space over here. So the disassembler does exactly what it says on the tin. And this thing will take apart machines for us and allow us to reclaim the circuits. So all of these combustion generators we can actually reclaim. Uh, I think we'll leave the steam turbines, but definitely these basic combustion generators. Even the basic extruder and the basic lathe, which we have no use for at this point. All of these things we can send through the disassembler. Oh yeah, of course, these things don't have any power. We, we do have to find a way to temporary power these things. Uh, it looks like we have some diesel in this line. Oh, look at this, this is glorious. And instead of combustion generators, we of course want gas turbines, which will run on benzene a much more renewable fuel source for us at this point in the game. Actually, how many circuits are we left with here? Hmm, only 8 left. Do we need to craft any more MV machines today? I did make us an MV centrifuge, which we used for the Electrotine and Nickel. Oh yeah, and we've even got our first Platinum Metallic Powder Dust, which is not quite Platinum yet. We still do have to process this down in various ways. But this is one of the things we want to send through the chemical bath with Mercury. Oh yeah, there's a few more stacks here, that's excellent. The thing I'm contemplating now is making another super tank. 
Uh, I think actually we'll hold on to the MV circuits and we'll just use a low voltage tank instead. It was just meant as a way to store benzene for the gas turbines over there to power the MV machinery. I think soon enough we'll look at a way to automatically transfer this to where it needs to be. That's a long overdue upgrade that we, need, we have to do because I've just been filling all the machines manually with cells or with a super tank in the case of the EBF. But that ain't going to cut it long term. Yeah, let's disassemble the rest of these combustion generators and turn them into gas turbines. Oh, there's something satisfying about this, look at this. It feels like free resources, even though it's actually not. We have crafted all this stuff before. Something worth mentioning about the disassembler is it can only do machines of its own tier or below, so we can't disassemble any HV machinery with this thing. It will happily eat up all the MV and LV machines though. Alright, so we crafted up four gas turbines to replace the combustion generators. And we should just be able to plug it into the battery buffer like we did before. Pump on the side of the tank to export. And that should be a slightly bigger buffer for the gas turbines. Wait, how do we have one extra? Am I just that bad at counting? <laughs> it's okay, we'll use this for the clean room. And speaking of the clean room, we still have, I don't know, like an hour worth of assembly recipes to go. We're getting there though, we, we almost have enough item fillers. We have the quest already for some re- oh yeah, it's because all of these are now optional. I think we need 24 of these filter machine casings. And I actually was able to find some calcite in amongst the ore chests over there, so we do actually have the wet concrete. It's just a matter of using the assemblers to put it all together. They are currently busy though, making carbon mesh. We should also have the black steel frame boxes, which is what we need. And then other than that, it's just a bunch of- oh yeah, the energy hatch. The energy hatch I started to piece together before the episode even started. Right, energy hatch, two MV energy hatches, perfect. All right, we got the maintenance hatch, the controller block. All we need is the plascrete, the filters, the reinforced door, and somewhere to place this thing. So there's a couple of different options for location. Here is gonna be reserved for the vacuum freezer, since it's next to the EBF, that makes the most sense. We want the clean room to be easily accessible because it will receive frequent use. So I was thinking actually maybe like in this space here where all this clay is, we do have the staircase above here, but we should be able to dodge that if we sink it down a little. Perhaps we add another staircase down this way, and then we can have the entrance to the clean room here on both sides. Oh no, and we just run out of zinc. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> that's, that's what I was worried about for these filters. It takes 16 zinc foils no matter which recipe we use here. Uh, yeah, I think I'm going to have to go mining in the nether, probably. Unless maybe that was one of the ones that I was thermally centrifuging. I was keeping these centrifuged outputs for the macerator at HV, mostly for the extra chance output. So actually, yeah, these should go through the HV macerator. Okay, let me do some crafting here, probably several hours, <laughs> and then we'll be back with the clean room, hopefully. Alright, so with the filter machine casings crafted, it's time for the assembly process of the clean room. So we got our chest of goodies here, I hope this is going to be everything we need. And I went with the original plan to put it underneath the storage room. Check this out, so there's actually two entrances into spaces underneath here. The first one goes into deep storage, where all the barrels are and the smellery. And the second one down here takes us to the space where the clean room will be. This fits almost perfectly, it does stick out a block, we'll say that adds character. Really though, it's just so that we can stay within the chunk boundary. Oh yeah, and also we got a second way in here, so we, there's actually an elevator in the floor, and straight above us here is the storage room. And then there's a second elevator a few blocks over, and this takes us down to deep storage. I think it's like right here is where the clean room is. So it works out like almost perfectly. And this jigsaw puzzle is such a fluke. I don't know if I could do this again. Look, look how intricate everything is here. It's amazing. Somehow everything fits. It's, I, I don't know, it's a miracle. I'm really hoping we can pass by the elevator with this filter above it. Let's see. Yes, we can. Perfect. Yeah, so all the filters go on the top. And I counted just enough. It's 24 filter machine casings for 5x5. Five five. And then the controller block goes in the very center. I don't think I made enough plascrete here. But the rest just has to be plascrete. And then I think I remember the number is 5% of it can be reinforced glass. So we do have some reinforced, I believe it's the IC2 reinforced glass. I'm going to put this up front here just so we can see what's going on inside. We'll try a 3x3 
I don't really feel like calculating 5%, so uh, we'll just try this and see if it works. Oh yeah, and I made some more of these uh, fancy doors just for a maintenance entrance, which is pretty cool. I realized we don't actually need this reinforced door since we have the elevator inside. Although maybe it's not gonna be a bad idea to add it just so that we can reduce the need for plascrete. Yeah, maybe we add it around the side here, like here. So we have to get power inside the clean room, but we can't put any turbines in there because these are dirty, right? And this is supposed to be a clean environment. So these have to be on the outside. So the way that we send power in there is via a machine hull. The machine hulls can send in one amp of power, in this case, MV power. However, we can also craft up something called a diode. In this case, we're gonna do a four amp version. And this allows energy flow in one direction. This is four amps in, four amps out. It doesn't transform any, it just allows it to pass through which is also a quest. It just allows it to pass through the, the walls of the clean room. Okay, so the diode we want in the wall of the clean room, which of course will allow us four amps on this cable. And then we have our two gas turbines, which are gonna point into a battery buffer. This is a four slot version, so four amps output. And we can give it four lithium batteries. So now all the MV machines will be on this line. We also need to send in HV power. I think for the time being, there's only gonna be one HV machine. So for this one, we are going to just use the machine hull, which is one amp. This will also get a battery buffer. Perhaps unnecessary, but I mean, we have the resources for it, so we might as well. And then an HV gas turbine. So that takes care of the machinery inside. We also need an um, energy hatch to power the clean room itself. The clean room only uses a tiny amount of power, but it still does require its own power source. So the energy hatch is going to go on the bottom here. And then another gas turbine. And then finally, we need a maintenance hatch. And once we add that, we have our clean room multi-block formed. I did have to remove a layer of glass. It looks like 3x2 is the maximum. So finally, we have to give all of these gas turbines power. So what we're going to do is have a fluid tank in the floor. And then we can run some piping along to all the gas turbines. And the fluid tank will be filled with benzene. Let's maybe move this one down, actually. We can put it down here and point it up into the battery buffer. Everything should be okay here, as long as we don't point the HV into MV. I've done that before. <laughs> and there's one more in the center here, right? Yeah. We can put a pump on the pipe and then fill up the tank with benzene. You know, I really should have done a backup before I done this, actually. We need to give the battery buffer its HV battery. And I think I was crafting more. There should be more in the cannon machine, right? Yes, there is. Perfect. Yeah, this battery buffer is overkill at HV since there's only one machine in there. All right, so now we need the clean room itself to start running. And as you can see here, it does actually have a time, a progress bar. Every 9 seconds, the efficiency is going to increase by 1%. And at anything less than 100%, we have a chance to void outputs inside the machines when we craft. So it's very important this thing stays at 100% efficiency. And the way that you do that is by not opening the door. If we open the door and let in all the contamination, then it's no longer a clean room, right? So yeah, it's pretty slow to get up to efficiency. But that's because we're running the clean room itself at MV. The higher tier of energy hatch on that thing, the, the faster it is to clean itself out. We did get two HV bags for the clean room quest, <laughs> which gave us some blocks. Okay, game. A gold to diamond chest upgrade is not bad, but... Okay, so now I think all we need to do is get the machines for inside the clean room, right? So the first thing is the precision laser engraver. We need an emitter. This is two HV circuits. Actually, let me double check we don't have one of those already. Oh, we do have one of those. That must have been for the quest. Okay, well, we'll save the circuits. I'm glad I checked. All right, one advanced precision laser engraver HV. And a request, precision is required. This is one of the best looking machines in the game. All right, the other one is the MV circuit assembler. Uh, no surprise that we don't have all the materials for this one. We need the emitter. We're out of electric motors. Man, we've used so, much, so many MV electric motors recently. Okay, there's the advanced circuit assembler MV. And what else did we need? Oh yeah, the cotton machine. There is two HV machine. Okay, we're gonna have to rejig some of the stuff down there. Probably amp add the diode after all. I, th I was thinking there was only one, two MVs and one HV, but it's actually the reverse. Okay, there we go. The advanced cutting machine HV. Yeah, so I guess we just have to switch these around. Okay, I switched everything around. We got four amp HV diode going into four X blue alloy cable, which probably could have been two X actually. Yeah, actually, I'm going to switch it around because I want to be able to put input and output chests. I think we were making more blue alloy over here. Yeah. So 
So we want input chests on the side of the machines, which are going to go here. Output chest for everything is going to go in the middle. And we're going to use conduits actually to extract. So everything is pulled from the machines into the chest when it's finished crafting. And then to insert, we can just use some conveyor modules on the side of the machines. All set to import. And there's one more space down here. Yeah, we want to set these to import. The final space is going to be for our existing LV circuit assembler. This guy right here. This is, I think, what made me confused. It's only LV, so we do need to make sure we use a transformer. And I will actually do a backup for this one. <laughs> I want to be extremely safe at this point. So yeah, the transformer can go down here once the backup finishes. Okay, transformer down here, which is going to plug into the MV line. Big dot is the input, small dot is the output. I'm extremely nervous connecting this cable. Let me just double check. Yeah, I think that's right. Input MV1 amp, output LV4 amps. Then we can plug in the basic circuit assembler here. And I think that's all we have to do at this point. Oh yeah, we can't forget to scan all this stuff with Thumbcraft. Get all those free research points. So the clean room is something that we'll be upgrading as we progress through the tiers. All the way up to, I think, LUV. I'm aware this episode is getting quite lengthy, but we can't leave this without at least crafting something inside here. And unfortunately, this thing went back down to 0% efficiency, I think when I broke the diode, or the machine hull to replace with the diode. Let's perhaps claim these quest rewards. I think we'll take the HV bag here. Okay, we got five more HV bags. Two night vision books. Wow. What are the chances of getting the exact same reward twice? <laughs> that's, that's actually kind of insane. Some carbon plates, some other garbage, an extra battery is not bad. We probably should save our... I think from now on we're going to save the loot bags and try and enchant them. Because you can enchant loot bags with fortune to theoretically give you increased uh, chance at some nice things compared to all this garbage that we're getting. Alright, so to finish up here, let's try to get the next tier of wafer, which will be used in the next tier of wafer chips. I don't know what you would call these. I guess chips. Memory chips. And this is just one of the very many components we need for the circuits. So first of all, we need some gallium arsenide crystals, which go through the forge hammer. They should turn into small crystals. Then we need some silicon solar grade dust, which we have here. Our little setup for it, we can just input regular silicon and it outputs SISG dust. Let's grab a few stacks. And finally, we need phosphorus, which if you'll remember, we get from benzene. I'm hoping it's the right kind of phosphorus and not phosphate, because they are two different dusts. Is this what we need? Yes, it is. Perfect. So these three components, along with eight buckets of nitrogen, go through the blast furnace. Canthol HV, which we have. And we actually have nitrogen right here in this super tank. Let's grab like 16 and we'll do two recipes worth. The silicon bulls actually go a very long way, so you don't have to craft them that often. Okay, it's on the last piece of stainless. Circuit three. Oh yeah, and of course, switch out the oxygen with nitrogen. Now it should start the recipe. 600 seconds. <laughs> and we're waiting on the clean room anyway, so it's fine. Yeah, unfortunately, we can't get the vacuum freezer today because we do need our workstations. We need the EV circuits. One of the other things I'm going to start working on between episodes is going to be plastic circuit boards, which we need for all of the circuits moving forward. And before we can get the finished circuit board, we need the regular plastic board, which is made with sulfuric acid. So there's multiple ways to get sulfuric acid, but we have a bunch of this hydrogen sulfide which is almost sulfuric acid. In fact, I've been keeping three tanks worth of it since I didn't want to avoid it at all. We get this as a byproduct from diesel. And actually, I realized I didn't talk about these three machines right here, which are a new addition this episode. So this is just a mixer, a chemical reactor, and our chemical bath. And the reason they're here is just because we have a water supply. So now that we're in HV, we can get the reservoir. The chemical bath no longer needs to be here. Since we're close to the vacuum freezer, and the only reason we used this was for cooling down hot ingots. So I was making up a bunch of canthal here. Although we can also use this with water to make paper. What we're going to do for now though is move this chemical reactor in its place. So there's two chemical reactors, one filled with water and one filled with what will be hydrogen sulfide. Yeah, we can do hydrogen sulfide and oxygen to give us sulfur dioxide. And then I think once more with oxygen gives us sulfur trioxide. And then once more with water gives us sulfuric acid. So yeah, I'm going to be batch crafting this between episodes. But this is the reason why you don't void fluids like this. Because now we have a whole bunch of sulfuric acid which we can use for the circuits. And 600 seconds later, we have our phosphorus doped monocrystalline silicon bull. Say that three times fast. 
and the quest. <laughs> I think uh, we lost efficiency again because I went to check on benzene. I, I think this is what happened. I went over to the benzene system and I think the chunk unloaded that the gas turbine is in. So it probably ran out of power and switched itself off, which could be an issue actually. I have now loaded these chunks within uh, FTB. That could be an issue. Maybe we have to move this to underneath. I guess we're waiting once again for it to reach efficiency. Alright, 100% efficiency, let's try for take two. We need some lubricant inside the cutting machine. And we're off, another 20 seconds to cut the wafer. I don't foresee anything going wrong here, honestly. Like, <laughs> what can possibly go wrong now? Aha, and everything gets output to the diamond chest. Perfect, we get our phosphorus doped wafers. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, these used to be glowstone doped wafers, right? I guess this was amongst some of the silicon changes. And one of the other things we can do is try out our laser engraver, which is just amazing here. Look at this. Look at this. The best machine in the game. The best single block in the game. Yeah, I guess the fact that they changed to phosphorus doped is part of the new silicon changes. Anyways, putting some wafers through here with the glass lens should give us the next tier of something. <laughs> I don't even know at this point. I think it's these central processing units, right? Yeah, which we can then cut again. And this is also a good point to wrap up the episode. I'm aware it's quite long, thank you so much if you made it all the way to the end of this. I'm having so much fun here in New Horizons. New Year, New Horizons. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next episode of New Horizons. Take care everyone.